The governance process for Zcash upgrades, first of all, is evolving um, because Zcash started as this project launched by our company and our company has continued to like innovate and develop it. Uh, but if it's going to be successful in the future, it, um, there will be multiple stakeholders who are invested in maintaining and upgrading the protocol. So to get from where we are to there is going to be an evolving process. Um, so right now in this early phase where things are primarily driven by the company, um, uh, our approach to governance is to keep things simple to understand for people and then let people choose what they want to do. Those are like the guiding principles. Um, so in terms of keeping things simple, we tend to shy away from more sophisticated governance technology so far. Um, like the community may want some of that, but we, we don't have like any uh, blockchain voting or sig uh, like upgrade activation signaling or anything like that. We just have a very simple approach, which is when we uh, propose an upgrade, we describe it, design it, implement it, um, and then ship it and when we ship it, we uh, code it up so that it won't activate for several months. And then the, the simple thing is users know, okay, there's this thing happening on this date. Um, if, uh, if some users don't want to do that thing, then they can find out about that, we hope. Um, and maybe they could rally around an alternative uh, implementation or, or community. Um, so that's how we kind of keep it simple. Um, and the first upgrade that, that just activated is called Overwinter and our entire focus there is um, we're anticipating in the future there could be a contentious upgrade where some community will want to take the chain one way and some may want to take it the other way. So we don't believe we can prevent that because users can always choose what they want to do. So instead, what we want to do is just prepare for if that happens, uh, we want users to be as safe as possible. So ways to be safe include avoiding confusion about which um, software or services are supporting which side of a potential split. And also technically when the split happens, making sure the software um, can't be confused about uh, differences on the chain. Um, so there's two technical um, things that come to mind immediately. So one is uh, if there were a split in the future um, and a user issues a transaction on one particular uh, child chain, that transaction will not be valid on the other child chain. So there's no confusion for the user about which system they would be interacting with. Um, and then another change is that um, we've, we, we've designed all future upgrades to be what Bitcoin people called, call hard forks, or Vitalik Buterin, the Ethereum founder, um, described something called uh, bilateral hard forks, and that is what we're aiming for. So what this means is if a split occurs, it's unambiguous um, for any block or transaction where it belongs, like which side it belongs on. And what that prevents is situations where you may have mining capacity changing because of economic or political dynamics. And when that happens, some of the nodes, um, you know, believe in a certain history and suddenly they realize there's a longer history that has been mined by a different group. Um, that is not possible with these kinds of splits because the nodes can unambiguously identify um, for, for each block which side of the split it was intended for and, and you can't like flip back and forth. So those are two safety goals um, that we sort of reinforced and established in Overwinter. Um, and our thinking was this shouldn't be um, contentious, like who would not want there to be less confusion um, in the future if there were contention. So we're just, um, yeah, trying to empower users and make them safer, safer for the future. So all of this is a 
is a preparation for this transition process away from the company just sort of saying, oh, let's do upgrade A and then upgrade B and upgrade C. Sooner or later, the foundation or other parties are going to say, well, you want to do upgrade C, but we're committed to upgrade C prime because we just know it's better. Uh, you know, sooner or later that will happen. And the foundation hopefully can have a, a good human process for resolving that. But if eventually that breaks down, technically we want the users to be safe and have a choice.